Hello and welcome to the Literary Bar. It's another interesting week and I'm excited to be here with you. Remember, I'm looking forward to having you join, join me here in the studio. Uh, it's been a difficult week for Nigerians in general, the art world, the music world, but most of all, the loss of our elegant stallion Onyeka Onwenu is such a devastating loss and we all met this news with shock. But Onyeka Onwenu has been such a wonderful gift to Nigerian music industry, to the art world generally. She's been a politician, a journalist, and she's an author, which is why it's also very, very dear to the literary bar. And that's why we are giving her a very special, special um, call out because she's one of us. She's so beloved. Oya Kawin has given us so many songs of which has resonated with us from Iyo Gogo to Ekwe. But significantly, her album titled, the song One Love, is such an endearing music that more than anything resonates with us even at this time. Onye Kawin, popularly called the Elegant Stallion, was so graceful and elegant in her delivery, in her presentation, that if she could have written the script of her life, she would have done it this way, leaving the stage with this amazing performance that she gave at the event where Sadly, she slumped and eventually lost her life. So the elegant stallion who gave us one love. At this time where Nigeria is not even sure where it's going, Onyeka's passing also calls to mind this song that she hopes will unite us more than anything. I remember the video of one love where people were fighting and all that and even in the lyric she says we don't need all of all of this no more fighting let's live in peace so i'm calling on anyone in loving memory of Onyeka, let us come together in one love and let this that she has preached with her life and her music be the most important lyric or soundtrack to the event as is unfolding right now in Nigeria. So it is with so much love that I say thank you, Onyeka Owenu, for being the amazing legend that you have been. Thank you for the music and thank you for the memories. Good night, elegant stallion. We'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll go into the book proper. Before I go into the book selection and poetry for this week, I want to share a bit about a conversation I had with my friend Baba. Baba is an elderly but very special friend of mine. Baba told me that, the word, that words were the sole currency of our human existence. The words we say to people and the words we use with ourselves. Ultimately, words create and shape the quality of our lives and relationships. Imagine when you hear the words, I love you, and juxtapose it with, I hate you. How will that make you feel? Over the years, men like Hitler, Pol Pot, Mobutu Sese Seko, Idi Amin, have used vile and hateful rhetoric to destroy the fabric of humanity. In these modern times, rebel leaders have used divisive language to rally their supporters to unleash mayhem in their communities. Rwanda's genocide, Boko Haram's insurgency, cult clashes, political violence, and brigandage. Words also act as a soothing balm over painful experiences when we empathize and sympathize with kind and carefully chosen words. As kids, we learn the magic word, please, thank you, excuse me, and I'm sorry. These magic phrases have been the key to great friendship and relationship over the years. Do take my word for it. 
because when we return from this short break, I will tell you about the book Baba graciously gave me to share with you. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Breeze was published in 1997 and has sold over 15 million copies in the USA alone. It has been on the New York bestselling list for over a decade. It's been published in 52 languages since its first publication. Don Miguel reveals the source of self-limiting beliefs that rob us of joy and create needless suffering. Based on Toltec wisdom, the four agreements can rapidly transform our lives to a new experience of freedom, true happiness, and love. This book is written in a simple language and is an easy read. In these difficult times, when we suffer from mental breakdown and self-inflicted pressures to meet up with societal expectations, the four agreement becomes even more important as a personal guidebook to help us navigate through the murky waters of unrealistic expectations of ourselves and others. After the break, I'll read a short excerpt from this amazing book. Okay, welcome back. So now I'm going to take you through the four agreements that would help you to carry on with your relationship, especially your relationship with yourself. A lot of the pressures that we feel in this world is because of how we talk to ourselves. When we feel that we're not meeting up or we have not done well or we have failed at a particular enterprise, be it business, be it academics, we use the hardest words on ourselves and these words tend to stick. And beyond just saying it to ourselves, when we also say terrible things to people, we have decided to embark on a journey of personal destruction and destroying other people. Because the words we say to other people defines us more than we know. So the first agreement says to be impeccable with your words. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the words you speak against yourself or to gossip about other people. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. We know what we're going through at this time. And as we're trying to call on people to come out, destroy, fight, and all that, we are only hurting ourselves. If we use our words to invite people to destroy our community and other people's properties, all of us are going to live with the consequences of what we have done. In Rwanda, when they had their genocide, the Hutus and the, tu and the Tutsis came together. The people who were spearheading this fight were calling their, their friends, their neighbors, cockroaches. They said, destroy them, they are cockroaches, they have no blood in their system. How can your wife, because she's Tutsi and you're Hutu, suddenly become a cockroach? How can your teacher, your neighbors become cockroaches just because they are fighting on the other side? And people use their words as a clarion call to destroy, to kill and maim their neighbors. Sometimes the words you send out have already gone on this errand that you cannot call back. So when you say, oh, I'm, I only said it. No, your words are impactful. Don't insult yourself just to make someone else look bad. And in, don't insult other people just because you want to feel better than them. When you're not impeccable with your words, it means that you have seen. Because the opposite of impeccability is peccability. And peccability means seen to sin. So when you are impeccable with your word, you try not to sin with the words that come out of your mouth. After all, words we exchange with each other is everything that we have from our beginning to our end. It's the words that we use that count. Communication is the lifeblood of any society. So be impeccable with your words, the things you say to people and the things you allow people 
to say to you. And even if they say something negative to you, you don't have to internalize it. It says more about them than about you. Don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. So somebody says you're a fool. You know that you're not foolish. Did they do any tests in your head to know if you were foolish? So why would you take that? Maybe the person is going through a really difficult time. And from the bitterness they feel in their heart, that is why they are coming up with this terrible word. Why would you take what they are saying personally? Tomorrow they'll say, hey, did I say that? I didn't know. I was just quarreling. I was just feeling upset. That's why I said it. So do not take some of the things that people do personally. After all, if somebody gives you a present and you don't want it, you say, thank you very much. Sorry, I don't want it. If somebody says something to you that is not for you, don't accept it. Just walk away. As they say in the Bible, shake your feet and just move away from those people. So don't take whatever people do personally. Their background may have been twisted or really they have personal issues and they're just trying to project how they feel. Don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. They say when you assume, you make an ass of you and me. Do not assume. Do not think that you know what someone is saying. I was at an event on Sunday and I left my phone in the car for the next four or five hours. I didn't have my phone. And all the people who were calling me at this particular time couldn't get me. And two people assumed that I didn't want to pick their call. I was calling you, did not pick my call. I couldn't pick your call because I did not have my phone. And I spent the next day apologizing to so many people because they assumed that I didn't want to speak to them. Why would you assume and then cause a lot of drama because you didn't get? Ask the questions. If you don't understand something, please ask. Please, can you clarify this for me? Please, I do not understand. Please, I'm uncomfortable with the words that, you are ex that you're using. Please, could you say it differently? But most of all, when people are going through some issues in their life, they tend to project it and truly do not assume that they are doing one or two things just because of you. The issues happening now, people are assuming the government is saying this because this. the government is assuming the people are saying this. At the end of the day, it is still a dialogue. So we need to ask and confirm some issues. And finally, it says always do your best. Your best is going to change from, the, from moment to moment. It will be different when you're healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. One of the worst things that can happen is at the end of the day, you ask yourself, did I really give it my all? So try as much as you can to give it your best. I did the marathon this year. I did the whole 42 kilometers because I was running for the sickle cell uh, charity. I never imagined that I would be able to do the marathon, but I practiced and I made it all the way. The, the first time I did it, I did only 10 kilometers. The second time I did about 26 kilometers, but this time around I did everything because I gave it my best. I, I knew that I was carrying the hopes and the aspirations of the charity that I was representing, which is Sickle Cell Advocacy and Management Initiative, SAMI. I knew that I was carrying their hopes and their dreams, so I gave it my best. And I'm so proud. When I got my medal, I knew that I, I deserved it. So that's what it means that always do your best. At the end of this book, there are still um, some other chapters that tell you how to let go of the image you have of yourself. Forget all of that, this image that didn't work for you, and try to see how you can start afresh. Every day is a new opportunity. Every day you have is 24 
hours for you to make it right. If you're going through certain issues, try and look for the resources, try and look for the exercises that can help you do your best. If you're a student, read a bit more. If you want to lose weight, try. The resources are out there, so we really do not have any excuse not to do our best. So I encourage everyone to take on the four agreements, especially now that our mental health is mental health issues is on the rise. So I, I urge you to get this book. It's actually by my bedside since Baba gave me this book. And thank you, Baba, for, for this. It is truly a wise, wise book from a very wise friend of mine. So please go out there. I can get it online as well. So I've talked a lot, right? So I'm going to brew me some tea. So when I come back, Get your cup of tea, get some wine. When I come back, we'll talk a little bit about literature still on the same theme of peace. Thank you. <laughs>